Hello there, person. This is my devlog, making the online cooperative hack and slash Wraithbinder, where the monsters that you kill become part of your army. In this episode, we're going to cover some juicier item drops aboard your ship, uh, an improved way to power up your character, and a bunch of other things. Alright, so first things first, the menu now has a bigger font, which is a lot clearer and easier to read. So here's what it used to look like. We have a, a more pixelated font. And this applied to all menus, including this light point menu where you can power up your character. So here we are again with the improved bigger font. Including here on this attribute increasing menu. Almost every one of these letters had sort of a little jagged spiky edge on it, like this M character right here has that jagged bottom. I went in and removed a lot of those, so for example I removed it from this I character and this capital T character. and. Now we just have a few letters left that have this stylization. The F character, the R, the M. That makes this overall font a lot more legible and easier to read. Just removing some of that stylization. Okay, here's something else that's new. The artwork for this helm right here, this is your helm aboard your ship where you select a mission, uh, has been improved a little bit where it's a little bit brighter. So now the edges of the helm are lit up really nice and blue. Whereas before they weren't so noticeable. So it's a lot more noticeable when you first get on your ship that you should go to this helm and do something with it. So here's where you select your mission and this has been improved as well. So you have a whole bunch of options for different missions that you can select. And then by selecting one of them, you get into a menu where you uh, have a little bit of a description of what's going on before you choose that mission. So this is called the proving. This is essentially what used to be called the training grounds. And uh, this is where you go and you earn your blade, shield, and bow abilities. So this is like basically the training mission. So you would select this and it would start up this mission. Uh, but we've also got core defense, which is the co-op mode of the game. And there's the higher on, which is the PvP battles with other players. And then we've got the Colosseum, which is a team PvP battle versus other players, but you're on a team with four other people fighting against another team of four people. Okay, let's take a look at some of these juicier item drops. Now when you uh, complete a mission, you actually get to uh, a whole bunch of extra item drops aboard your ship. So during um, a mission, you actually gain a whole bunch of gold um, from fighting monsters and uh, also for slaying other players. You also gain light points for slaying players um, as well. Uh, but when you get back to your ship, you're all you're gaining items um, beyond that as well. So you gain ability items. So this time we gained the levitate. And you can go ahead and test out your ability on board your ship. And you also gain coordinates to different missions. So now we've got the coordinates to the team battle mission where we can go and use that at the helm up here and choose that mission. And you also get items like uh, weapons and armor. So this time I got a double axe and that means it changed my weapon. Um, so I've got that axe on my back now and I can swing that axe right here. So now that we have some more light and gold Let's go ahead and use our light points. Let's show what's new here on this menu. This is the uh, menu where you can power up your attributes for your character. And you use your light points to, um, to power up different attributes. So right now I'm at level 11. And that's based on the total amount of light points I've collected so far. So I've collected 90 total light points. And I have 16 light points I can spend right now. Those are both under my name there on the left above my character. Uh, so then I can go and power up, let's say I wanted to power up my hit points. I can, so I'm investing light points into uh, these pips. So um, every one of these pips, which is a single bar on, on this thing we're powering up here, 
Each one of these has a certain number of light points that would power up the pip entirely. So I believe HP and MP take four. Yeah, one, two, three, four. So yeah, four light points would power these up. But some of the more advanced abilities, like um, H, let's do you know magic points regen. I think that took, what did that take, eight or so to get that? And then other ones too, like stun chance, that would be, it takes a lot of these to get that. So being able to power up these attributes really adds a lot of fun to the game because it makes the whole core game loop really exciting. You go and you play a mission, you gain light points, you gain gold, and you're able to go and spend them aboard your ship. All right, a number of improvements been made to these, uh, the proving grounds or the training world. And this is where you earn your blade, your bow, and your shield. One thing that's a lot more fun about the proving grounds is that there's a lot of things you can hit. So you get your blade and there's just pillars everywhere where you can harvest your matter points. That makes it a lot more fun because you just are able to physically interact with the world. And another thing is that you gain your shield and your bow and your blade abilities here and these permanently apply to your character. So your character starts off with just your blade and by doing this Proving Grounds mission you gain, you actually get the, the shield ability and you get the bow ability. You also get to battle a few monsters here and learn that A, you get gold for defeating them and B, you gain them as wraiths, so they'll follow you around and fight for you and become part of your army. Alright, some improvements to the artwork. Uh, the core, this is the core here. Uh, this has been improved, so this this is what it used to look like. And then also, here's what jars used to look like on the ground after they've been destroyed. Here's what spawners used to look like, and here's what the boss spawner used to look like. And here's the new art for the core. It's more like a big old container full of liquid. And check out what happens when I destroy these jars here. They're going to fade into the background. Their saturation won't even be visible. There we go. It's nice, right? It's easier on the eyes when you see things that are destroyed and they're not so contrasted. Here's the new artwork for the spawner. Has a little creep monster on top of it. And here's the artwork for the new boss spawner. It's got a big old creep on top of it. Another thing that's new is we have uh, frame rate and ping indicators. So in the bottom left of the screen and the bottom right of the screen, we have those two indicators and we can turn them on or off with an option. All right, here's another player bonus. You can now run Wraithbinder.exe even on a fresh install of Windows 7. So that means that you don't have to install any redistributable files or the DirectX runtimes or any of that kind of stuff. You can do it straight on a fresh install of Windows. Uh, this is accomplished by having the DLLs that are necessary for Wraithbinder.exe to run right here in the folder with these files. So all these are the necessary DLLs and BAM! You don't have to install anything as a player. Alrighty there, person. Thanks a lot for watching this video. That's all for this time, and we'll catch you the next one. Alright? See ya!